All right, section 4.7, solving polynomial equations. Today, what we're doing is very similar to what we did yesterday. You're going to be factoring. The only problem is yesterday, we didn't have an equation. Today, we have an equation. So we're going to be solving for the various variables within each polynomial. So how do we solve polynomial equations is today's question. Here we go. A polynomial equation is an equation that is equivalent to one with a polynomial on one side and zero on the other. You can always add or subtract polynomials to both sides of the equation to make it such that one side is zero. So this is no different than just solving single variable equations like x plus 3 equals 4. You can move things around by subtracting or adding the same thing to both sides. You can be doing that today. A root or solution of a polynomial equation is a value of a variable that satisfies the equation. So when a polynomial written in x has 0 on one side, you can solve the equation by factoring and using the zero product property. So here's a zero product property from chapter 1. a times b equals 0 if and only if a equals 0 or b equals 0. And that makes sense. Whenever you have something that multiplies into 0, one or both terms have to be 0. So that's basically what we'll be using to solve these problems today. To use the zero product property to solve a polynomial equation, you need to, one, write the equation with zero on one side, which means you have to move everything to one side of the equation. It's kind of like moving everything onto one side of the boat and leaving nothing on the other side. Two, factor the other side of the equation, the side that doesn't have the zero. You're going to need a factor. And all the problems today, you're going to be able to factor if you can't factor, you'll have to use the quadratic formula, which we'll do later. And three, solve the equation obtained by setting each factor to zero. That's when you use a zero product property, because if you have a times b equals zero, one or both, or in some cases three or four, any one of those has to equal zero. When you use this, you are finding the zero or the zeros of the equation or function. So when someone says, what are the zeros of this equation? They're basically asking you to solve it. So example one, we have q times the quantity 2q plus 6 equals 0. So step one, we already have 0 on one side, so that's good. Two, we already have a factored equation. So we can jump right to step three, which is using the zero product property. So remember, the zero product property says that if a times b equals 0, that either a or b must equal 0. So in this case, q times q, 2q plus 6 equals 0 if and only if q equals 0 or 2q plus 6 equals 0. So one of these two terms has to equal 0 if the equation has to be true. So we just solve each half. So either q is 0 or we solve this algebraic equation. 2q is equal to negative 6 and q is equal to negative 3. Now when you write these out, make sure you use a solution set. The solution set for this equation is negative 3 comma 0. Now, when you solve these yourself, you don't have to write every step down. You just have to make sure you go from here to here. So just write q equals 0, and then you can say 2q equals negative 6, q equals negative 3. As long as I know you understand the problem, that's fine. You don't have to go through it step by step. It's certainly not to write out the steps. I'm just writing out the steps for you so that you can see what's going on. Double or multiple zeros or roots. If a factor appears twice in an equation or function, you have a double root of the equation or a double zero of the function. If a factor repeats more than once, those repeated factors are called multiple zeros or multiple roots. So a double zero is a type of a double multiple zero. You could have a double root, you could have a triple root. If you had, say, x cubed equals zero, that would be a triple root. So let's take a look at example two. 2c minus 1 times c plus 4 squared equals 0. So if we use the procedure that we learned a couple slides ago, we can skip to step 3 because everything's factored. 2c minus 1 equals 0, or c plus 4 equals 0, or c plus 4 equals 0, because it appears twice. So if we solve each algebraic equation, we get c equals 1 half, or c equals negative 4, or c equals negative 4. Now when you solve this, you don't have to write these out twice. I'm only doing this to show you that 
there are two roots to illustrate the point of a double root. So in this case, the solution set is negative 4, comma, 1 half, and negative 4 is a double root of the equation. Now, if I don't ask you what the double roots are, you don't have to even include this part there. But if I do ask you what's the solution set and if there are any multiple roots, then you would have to add this part here. But if I just asked you for a solution set, this is good enough. So again, double roots come into play when you have the same factor appear more than once. If this were c plus 4 cubed, you would have a triple root of negative 4. Example 3, x minus 2 quantity squared times x squared minus 9 equals 0. All right, so we have already have everything moved to one side of the equation. And so our first step would be factor completely. You notice that the x squared minus 9 is not completely factored. So go ahead and factor that to x plus 3, x minus 3. That's a difference of squares. Now you're going to apply the zero product property. So we have x minus 2 equals 0 or x plus 3 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0. And now you just solve each equation for x. So x is either 2, negative 3, or 3. And that becomes your solution set. Negative 3, comma 2, comma 3, and 2 is a double root. Because it appears twice, because x minus 2 quantity squared. So for any of these problems, if you feel comfortable doing these without watching all these, go ahead, do them. This is only meant for you guys that might need a little extra help, need a little extra time. But if you feel very comfortable with these, feel free to zoom through them, do the examples, and just check to see if your answers are correct. Example 4, y squared plus 7y equals 18. So you guys can try this if you want. And let me know if you need any help in class the next day. But for now, let's do this. Put a 0 on one side. So you got to shift the 18 over to the left side. So you get x, a y squared plus 7y minus 18 equals 0. The second step is to factor completely. So I'm going to let you do that on your own. But the factors of 7 squared plus 7y minus 18 equals 0 are y plus 9 times y minus 2. Basically, you're looking for two factors that multiply up to negative 18 but add up to 7. So you have 9 and negative 2, they add up to 7, so you're good. So now we just use the zero product property. So y is going to equal negative 9 or 2. So it's always good to write this step just so that you illustrate what the principle is that either term has to equal 0. So whether you do that on a test or not, I'm not going to make a big stink of it, but this is the idea. You have to explain it. So if I ask you on a test, why do you go from here to here? Well, you put or put the second step in there and use a zero product property to explain why you did what you did. So the solution set to example four is negative nine comma two. Number five, solve for three r squared equals ten r plus eight. So take a shot at this if you want. Step one would be to put a zero on one side. So let's move everything over to the left side by subtracting 10r from both sides and subtracting 8 from both sides. That gives us 3r squared minus 10r minus 8 equals zero. The second step is to factor completely. Now you can use the box, you can use the cross. I'm using the box because I think it's pretty easy to understand. But you guys can factor this however you feel comfortable. So you are looking for factors of negative 24, 3 times negative 8, that add up to negative 10. So you can crank them out, but you'll see that the factors are negative 12 and 2. So we put the first term and the third term inside these corners of the box. And then we put a negative 12r and a 2r in the other two boxes. Now we just factor the rows and columns. And if you do that, you will get 3r is a factor of these two terms, 2 is a factor of these two terms r is the factor of these two, and negative 4 is the factor of these two. So now you just put these together to get 3r plus 2 times r minus 4 equals 0. Now we just use a zero product property to solve each side. So 3r plus 2 equals 0, or r minus 4 equals 0. r is equal to either negative 2 thirds or to 4. And that's your solution set. So if you have to use the box or the cross to factor, you have to do that. Solve for r. Example 6. u to the fourth equals 36u squared. So our first step again, put a 0 on one side. 
u to the fourth minus 36 u squared equals zero. Now, I want to see if you guys can do this on your own, so take a minute to try to solve it yourself, and then check your answer. All right, we factor it completely. First thing you have to do is factor out the u squared, because that is a common factor. So if you take out a u squared from both terms, you have u squared outside. Inside, you're left with a u squared minus 36 equals zero. So you're not done yet, because you have a difference of squares there. So go ahead and factor those two. You get u squared times u plus 6 times u minus 6 equals 0. So now we're ready to go to the zero product property. So we have either u equals 0 or u equals 0 because we have a u squared. Or u plus 6 equals 0 or u minus 6 equals 0. Since these two are done, let's move to these two. u can also equal negative 6 or 6. So our solution set becomes negative 6, 0, 6, with 0 being a double root. And again, when you saw this, you don't have to write this out twice. I'm just using it to illustrate the point that the u appears twice in the equation, and that therefore that 0 is a double root. So again, you don't have to write u equals 0 twice, but make sure you identify the fact that it's a double root if the question asks for it. Finally, number 7. Solve quantity a plus 3 times quantity a minus 3 equals 40. So let's apply the procedures. Go ahead and try it yourself and check your answer. Put a 0 on one side first. So you're going to have a plus 3 times a minus 3 minus 40 equals 0. Step 2, you're going to have to factor it completely. But to factor it completely, you have to multiply these two terms together. So you can combine the like terms. So we get a squared minus 9, which is these two multiplied together, minus 40 equals 0. We combine the like terms, and we get a squared minus 49 equals 0. Again, we have a difference of squares, so a plus 7 times a minus 7 equals 0. Go to the next screen. Now we apply the zero product property. So a plus 7 equals 0, or a minus 7 equals 0. Therefore, a equals negative 7, or a equals 7. So that's pretty much it for section 4.7. Make sure you follow the steps. You'll get quicker in these as you do more of them, and the questions will start to look the same. There are only so many ways you can ask, this, ask these questions, so just make sure you follow the steps correctly and that you understand why you do each step. Because if I ask you on a test, hey, why do you apply the zero product property in step three? And you'd have to say it's because that for any product to equal zero, at least one of the terms have to equal zero. All right, if you have any questions, ask in class on Monday or ask questions on the Facebook page.